the whole purpose of, of, of trying to come up with life cycle costs for the rural water supply is very much a professionalizing what's already been done in the, in the urban area and in utilities and try to transfer that language and what are the possibilities for rural and peri-urban areas. So this is, we didn't invent this. This is literally adapting the language of utilities to the rural water supply. And there's other organizations for, for a long time who have used uh, some of these components. But it's, it's very hard, I mean, like uh, they were mentioning, I mean, there's different frameworks of analyzing costs. And if you are in academia or if you are an accountant or if you are a government, you have different ideas. And we try to simplify this as much as possible. So what you both see is the simplification of that framework. And our, uh, our life cycle costs have six key cost components, and each of them is subdivided. The, the first one, and the one that everyone knows about, it's called CAPEX, capital expenditure. It's the one-off lump sum investments needed to build your asset, to build your infrastructure. And this doesn't have to be just the hardware, it can also be the software. So you have CAPEX, hardware, CAPEX, software. The, the, the thing to remember is that it's a one-off, it's lumpy, it's big, it happens one time. That's the, the one the thing that it's important. And this is usually in all the project proposals, in all the plans, this is there. Everyone talks about uh, CAPEX. The second one, it's usually known in the sector as O&M. In technical terms, it's operational minor maintenance. It's OPEX, operational expenditure. And this tends to be regular, minor, small. Communities can usually cope with this one, usually. We have instances in some countries where even OPEX was difficult to cover. And this is also usually mentioned, oh, and then you know, we put in the CAPEX, then the community start uh, doing their op minor man uh, maintenan maintenance uh, of their water supply and their, their assets. So far, so good. Then we come into the parts which are usually uh, missing in all the plans and all the monitoring, and it's capital maintenance. Capital maintenance is the replacement of your hand pump, it's the replacement of large components of the, of the, uh, of the rods. It's usually, it's not lumpy, it's lumpy, it's about, it's anything over, more or less over $100. It takes place every three years to five years. It's usually not budgeted for, there's no money paid for it, it's left to the communities to pay for it, and most, in peri-urban areas, there, some, some neighborhoods can pay for capital maintenance, also with the diaspora and, and fund transfer, but uh, some of the, the amounts of capital maintenance is very large and it's not possible for them to, to pay for it. It's, it's the ping pong part of the money. It's the, the donor saying, well, we gave you the asset, you manage it, the government. The government says, well, then the community manages it. Some, some NGOs say, well, we train some area mechanics uh, to do this, but actually then it's still very costly and the area mechanics are not paid for and they've been trained for minor maintenance, which the community can do the minor maintenance. So we have, a, this, is, this is a big black hole and it's very interesting because the government of Uganda actually does have a budget line for capital maintenance. It's one of the few countries in Africa to have this. South Africa also has it. But it's empty. There's, there's bank accounts in the districts to do this. It's empty. It's difficult because you need to save for it. Why should you be saving for something which will happen in five years? You have a school to be built. You have a health center. Why should you be putting this amount of money? You, you deal with it when it happens, right? big problem in the water sector and we will go a lot to discuss it a lot today. In utilities, you have your staff. You have the staff that goes and looks for the leakages. You have client support. You have the accounting systems. In real water su supply, there is not a utility. You have different organizations and governments and NGOs and donors working in an area. And there needs to be this follow-up after the, the hand pump is in there, after all the, the infrastructure is built for urban pipe systems. Someone needs to, to keep looking after it. Someone needs to retrain communities. Someone needs to keep checking the accounts. And, then, and this is usually OPEX. This is part of the operational maintenance within a utility. In rural water supply, we don't have this. And there's a little bicycle in the district. It's, 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 the, it's the salaries of the staff of the district. It's the, the overheads of the NGOs, which are not there for three years, but for 10. This is what we call direct support. And this is where we have to start adapting the, the costing framework. 
so far, it's all utility language. This is where it's a little bit different. So we call it direct support. There has been whole sessions during this forum on post-construction support, uh, there are papers, it's all about this. It's the direct support. Then we have what we call the indirect support. It is the cost of your capital city ministry level. Very interesting, in some countries which are supposed to be decentralized and have much more of expenditures over here, actually when you go and collect expenditure, it's all happening at, very, at capital level. It's retaining all these funds. This needs to be costed. Usually it's a very small percentage, but it needs to be um, yeah, accounted for. And then the final one is the cost of capital. There's a lot of loans for Africa. There's, um, so you have the cost of your interest rate. Even concessionary loans, which you don't have to pay for 10 years, you need to start paying interest. It's like your house. And you need to have that money in the bank account or in, on, and in the government uh, budgets. And we're finding that because that there's a rotation in governments, yeah, some, some countries in our project, I mean, they didn't even know when they saw the size that we'll have to start paying in 10 years. It was a shock. Then it needs to be budgeted in your, in your uh, water budget. It's also return on equity to private providers. Usually called profit, it's, return on, it's called return on equity. It's because instead of investing in a bank account, and they actually took the risk of investing it in a water system, and they had like to have some return. So it's, it's not a bad word. That's why I say profit is usually a bad word. This is, you, you, you have savings. In some of these countries, it's impossible to have savings. You need to have investments, and you're expecting some return. So just to try to take a little bit of the, of the bad language from, from rural water supply. This is not bad. Without it, without returns on equity, you don't have investments from the private operators. Then you can see what's a proper, adequate level of return on equity, but that's something else. So these are the six broad cost components. They can, we have, it's called Briefing Note 1A. It has large tables at, at the back of it with all of these break, broken down into hundreds of little cost components, which, which can be used like a checklist. So all of this subdivided, and we have all this information, we have an indicator list, but we will go down to it. 